Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never duplicated Syntax News Show. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew Colin Glass, and this week's edition covers the week ending October 1st, 2022. I'm going to go through a selection of headlines. They're going to be syntaxed. We'll talk a little bit about them. I'll uh, offer you a few different angles from which to view the headlines, a couple different lenses, and then we'll have meme of the week. Actually, there's more than one. And this week's cognitive conjecture section features none other than the man himself, full colon, David hyphen win, full colon, Miller. All right. Let's jump in. Our first headline comes from U.S. News and World Report. Barclays to pay $361 million over securities selling blunder. What, what are they saying here? Let's just look at it. Now, the whole premise of the fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble is that the author wants us to assume what it is they're talking about. But because it is a language of modification, a grammar of modification, sometimes it's difficult to figure that out, especially if this language, i.e. plain English, is not your first language. So it says Barclays to pay. Okay, T-O, that's future tense, 361 million. So Barclays is this is going to happen in the future. They're going to pay 361 million over securities. So they're going to pay it over securities. And they're also going to be selling blunders, I guess. Or maybe that's a typo and they're selling blunders. <laughs> in any case, we got Barclays, which is a pronoun and as we know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb in the future tense, which is modifying pay into an adjective, which is coloring the number 361 into an adjective, which is coloring million into a pronoun. And again, same rule that I said before, the pronoun is followed by an adverb over, which is modifying securities into an adjective, which is coloring selling into an adjective ending in blunder, which has been colored into a pronoun. And we can see in yellow the particles of negation. Two is a particle of negation, T-O, because it's future tense. Any vowel in front of a consonant is no contract. And if you want closure on that, you can check out the video that I did on it. It's a very in-depth video. It's called For the Closure and Clarity, or maybe it's For the Clarity and Closure, of the two specific syntax scenarios, part one and part two. Very good series. Some of the best work I've done. And then uh, SE is a particle of negation when it precedes a hard sounding consonant, in which case it does here. And then the ING, of course, is a modifier. And it is a particle of negation. Next headline. How to sell your soul to the devil. Oh, wow, that's an old article. I didn't realize that, but it's an interesting title, so why not? There is no future, there is no past, it's all just now, so let's do it. You can have power, wealth, and attractive mate in virtually anything else you ever dreamed of by selling your soul to the devil. But how? You must know what you're doing when you make that deal, or Satan will cheat you blind. That's the word from Dr. Rex Touth expert on satanic rituals and author of How to Negotiate Unholy Contracts. Well, we have how as a pronoun, followed by adverb, future tense to, sell as a verb, yours an adverb, soul is an adjective, to is future tense pronoun, the is adverb, and, to, and devil is a Dangling participle verb. 
And I'm just going to go through and say the parts of speech. we got adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, because wealth is between two commas, uh, two breaks in a continuance of the evidence, so therefore it's standing by itself, and that's a pronoun. Uh, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Ooh, conjunction. Pronoun. So the way that works is attractive is a tangible contract adjective, which is coloring both mate and virtually into pronouns and those two pronouns um, are connected by this neutral condition of state conjunction a conjunction is not modified by anything nor does it modify anything it's just basically a bridge and here it's just a bridge between those two pronouns and as we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for breaking the continuance of the evidence or in this case an adverb which anything is an adverb and then we have else as a verb adverb adjective adjective past tense dreamed and then uh of as a pronoun now i've neglected to do the ed and dream yellow mark but that is past tense and that would be a particle of negation also some people teach or say that well if you see an ly in a word that's automatically an adverb that is not true that's a violation of rule one rule equal and very simple judge mechanics ladies and gentlemen because as a judge, if you are a judge of your own documents, meaning if you're an authority of your own construct, you have to get the whole picture. You have to get the whole story. You can't just go in and say this is this and this without getting the whole story, all the evidence. And with all the evidence here, virtually couldn't possibly be an adverb. It can only be a pronoun. It's a non-tangible contract pronoun, but just like a verb, uh, Pronouns can be either non-tangible or tangible. Then we have by selling adverb verb, uh, adverb adjective pronoun future tense adverb verb adverb verb so on and so forth. You can see the rest. I just basically chose this because it's a, a pretty humorous humorous thing to do. Uh, I personally have never uh, made any contracts with an entity such as this, but I will say that the fiction, <laughs> the fiction is very similar to that guy. Next headline comes from one of those news magazines that I used to read at the uh, checkout aisle at the supermarkets, the Weekly World News. And this headline says, Toilet turns into space-time portal when flushed. Uh, it says, after about 16 flushes and the toilet spitting up Vikings, I started to get suspicious, says owner. The hand is extended, trembling above the lever. Slowly it grips the wooden... Oh, oh, it goes into the story, right? We see a Viking there. We see a little dragon coming out of the toilet. That's a pretty crazy toilet, right? we got adjective pronoun, adverb future tense, adjective pronoun, adverb... Dangling participle verb in the flat, uh, past tense. You notice we have quotation marks and after about 16 flushes, yada, yada, yada. We won't syntax that because um, that falls under the four corner rule. The rule of boxing. It's not on the page. So therefore we don't syntax it. And then we just syntax the rest of it there. Uh, including the particles of negation. That's probably the most interesting headline I've read thus far. Last headline comes from the Babylon Bee. Which really, ladies and gentlemen, is no more or less credible than U.S. News and World Report. Am I right? Sources allege Trump stole plans revealing White House's thermal exhaust port. Well, if you know, you know. I'm not going to explain that one. But I will syntax it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go through and see if we can find some particles of negation. Do you see any negative conditions of state in these words here? Particles of negation, there's one. There's one. There's another one. 
There's one. That'll do for the particle negation. Now let's go into the syntaxing itself. Now I do see a plethora of adjectives. There you have it. Pretty easy, this one. It's all tangible contract words. Uh, most of the, the words are tangible contract in the main headline there. Matter of fact, all of them are. Just adjectives up to the uh, pronoun port. And then uh, the only adverb is the in the title of the Babylon B. Because the is not tangible. Con oh, top. Top is in a box, though. We don't need even to worry about that. There you go. There's your syntax lesson. If you want more information on syntaxing, check out the, uh, I think there's over 50 videos on my syntax playlist on my YouTube channel here. Over 400 videos free to the public of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge. My gift to you. Feel free to make full use of it. Now we're moving on to the meme of the week. I thought this one was especially funny. It says, damn, Kachpa getting hard. Select all squares with bishops who dissented from the Christological findings of the First Council of Nicaea. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. But yeah, that, that's pretty, that is a pretty difficult one. A lone sharpie lid, one of the most terrifying things a parent can find. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or if you find one of these in the dryer. Ooh. Now moving on to the cognitive conjecture portion of the program. As you can see here, we got the man himself, Colin David Iphone, Colin Miller. This comes from a channel called Multi-Tool Production has 43 subscribers and the description says police work for the postmaster and David Wynn Miller beat law enforcement in covert Wow not sure what that means put one dollar stamp on driver's license makes you a postmaster that is 100% incorrect. Putting a $1 stamp on a driver's license will not make you a postmaster, number one. Uh, well, yeah, that's it. But let's hear what the man himself has to say and uh, I'll react to it. Now, when you put a $1 stamp on it, on the back of your driver's license and you autograph it, it makes you a postmaster transporting the mail, M-A-I-L, of your body because it's a vessel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I do have an issue with what he's saying there. I'll do honor and grace to the master. Colin David, I've been Colin Miller, of course. Much respect to the man. I do have a, uh, an issue with what he's saying here. Autographing over a stamp does put you in a position of postmaster if you know what a postmaster is and you know what it is you're doing now simply autographing over a stamp on a driver's license um, does not mean that it, it mean it means you are transporting that particular vessel but it doesn't mean it, it's you because if you look on the driver's license number one it's not your driver's license. It's the state's driver's license. If you're in the past tense United States, like mine says Michigan driver's license. 
It doesn't say Jason's driver's license. It says Michigan. So it's Michigan's driver's license. Number two, the name. The name on the driving license is not on my license. Uh, not my license. On the state's driver's license that I carry is not my name. It's all capped. Has nothing to do with this body. There is an assumptive association between those things. But if you're in the know and you know how these things work and maritime law and all these things in the fiction, that has nothing to do with me. It's an implied connection, but it's not, it's an assumption, just like most other things in the fiction. So what are you saying here? Um, I'd be very careful with it because that is not what's happening at all. I mean, yes, you are transporting this vessel, but that has nothing to do with the license. If, <laughs> basically, if you're looking for things like that, uh, a live life claim or a sea pass sea treaty would be more in line with what he's saying, not the state drive, the fiction driving license, though. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more in a minute. On the front, it's the address of where the postmaster is going to deliver the mail. That's your home address. If a police officer stops you and gives, tries to give you a ticket, He's stopping a postmaster from delivering the mail to your house. Because the post office controls the Department of Transportation and Homeland Security, which is all branches of military and police, he's arresting a postmaster that he works for. Now, that's all well and fine, ladies and gentlemen. But again, I caution you, be very careful with what you're doing out there. If you choose to follow what this man is saying, you better be prepared for the consequences um, of what happens. I highly recommend further study into this to really, really know what you're doing. If you're gonna be in a situation like that and you're gonna say the things that he's suggesting that you say. I myself would not do those things or say those things uh, in that scenario well first of all i wouldn't be pulled over i haven't been pulled over in many 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 years uh however not it's not to say it couldn't happen but i'd definitely be very careful uh, know what it is you're doing really know what you're doing and these are all the laws he breaks on the back and the procedure by which you prosecute the police officer for giving you a citation written with 400 mistakes on it <laughs> And here's the other thing that I don't participate with is that what he's talking about is those things that are on his business card. Uh, I was fortunate enough to purchase his book directly from him in 2017. And he sent me some business cards that had what he's talking about on there, the, the codes and things like that on the back of the business card. However, what I found after I, gained more knowledge is that what he basically did was take the fiction codes and things and translate them to the best of his knowledge into correct sentence structure to sort of use them against the fiction which is not necessary because if you're just going to prosecute the fiction with fiction then just use fiction I mean, why would you use something that they wouldn't even understand? That doesn't make sense to me. Logically, there are a lot of other things that you can do that are much more powerful, I think, than what he's saying. And that have worked for me. Very simple things, too. Very simple things. But I digress. Let's listen. Which is a violation of 152 laws besides these. So by putting that stamp on the back and signing it or autographing it, do not curse it, autograph you will then be in a position to educate rather than be prosecuted. Okay, notice he said, don't sign in cursive. If you remember in that video that I did where I did a reaction to some of Russell J. Gould's public claims, his claim for Postmaster General, he doesn't autograph over the stamp. He signed in cursive over the stamp. Check that video out if you haven't yet. Also, um, 
when David says it puts you in a position to educate, I 100% am enjoying it with what he's saying there. If you are put in this type of situation, um, you can utilize the principles of peace, neutrality, honor, grace, rule one, rule equal, and educate well, at least offer to educate the individual that you're talking to. And by educate, I don't mean say, you have a second grade reading level. You're stupid. You don't even know what you're saying. There are no facts in what you're saying. No, no. I highly recommend getting rid of all that blustery type of attitude. The main man here may have been able to do things like that and succeed. But this man had more charisma than... You know, he had the, if you get like 10 or 20 people coming off the assembly line and they each have their allowance of charisma, he got like the charisma of 10 to 20 men. He had a lot of charisma and he probably could succeed in doing things like that. But you and I, normal everyday people, don't really have that. So it's best to just remain very calm, cool, collected, humble, but firm. With the balance of the honor and grace, the uh, maintenance of rule and rule equal, and the position of peace and neutrality. And it should turn out okay for you. Thank you very much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed this edition. If you have any suggestions or critiques or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you would like to become a member of this channel, go ahead and click that join button. There are two tiers. Uh, you can check out what each tier offers. Also, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, you can study the over 400 videos on this very channel that I've created. I've invested thousands of hours in it. It's my gift to you. Or you can fast track your learning and apply for a correct grammar workshop by emailing me at the email address listed below here. In any case, again, I really appreciate your viewership and we will see you next week. Stay safe. Salud.